Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to another session on engineering graphics. I hope you all had a very fine vacation and Diwali break. So let's start once again with projections. Before Diwali break, we completed projections of points, projections of line, and projection of plane. Now, from 1D to 2D, now to 2D, to let's move on to 3D. Let's make projections of solids. Before making projections of solid, we should know what is a solid and what are the different types of solid and classifications of solid. And then only we can study that how we can project a solid and what are the different projections that are there of a solid when it is kept in a plane. Okay, so we are going to study first of all the classifications of solid and then we will study projections like uh, so projections of uh, solids like cylinder, cone, pyramids, prism, etc. with their axis parallel to one of the plane and perpendicular to the other reference plane. Okay, now what is a solid basically? When we think of a point, we always know that it is a one dimensional object. It is not even an object, it is a one dimensional thing because it does not, not even one dimension, we can say it is a zero dimension, it is just a point. Then we move on to line, then it becomes one dimensional because it has length. Then we move on to the plane. The plane is a two dimensional object. Why? Because it has length as well as width or you can say breadth, length and breadth or length and width. And when we talk about solids, we can say that it is a three dimensional object which has three uh, characteristics. One is length, the other one is breadth, the third one can be depth or it can be a thickness. Some of the examples of uh, uh, solids are given on the screen. You can say this is a sphere, this is a cube, this is a cuboid, this is a cone, this is a cylinder and these similarly square based pyramid, triangular based pyramid, then we have triangular prism and we have hexagonal prism. So these are a few examples of solid and you can observe in each and every one of them. If you say, if you take cuboid, so this is the height of the cuboid. This is the, uh, say, width of the cuboid and this is the length of the cuboid. So it ha it is a three dimensional object and it will be a solid. It can be empty from inside, it uh, means hollow from inside or it can be solid. But we consider that it has outer surface. So we are considering it as a solid. Right now we are assuming that it is filled with matter, so we are taking it as a solid object just like a stone. This is a cone, a cone has its uh, length and breadth that is the diameter of the circle which is a base circle, then it has its height, so it becomes a three dimensional object. Similarly, the same things exist with the pyramid and the prism. So say if we take an example of this uh, triangular based pyramid, then we can see that a triangle is a two uh, is a plane that is a two dimensional object, then it has height. So it becomes a three dimensional object. And this triangular square pyramid based is has totally of four tri triangles. So we can say that it is a three dimensional object. Moving on, let's make classifications of solid. So we'll classify solids which we are going to use in our syllabus. Uh, so it, it is quite easy and we are going to leave the rest of the things out in this particular session. So we will classify them into two types, uh, A, group A and group B. Group A will be solids which have both upper and the lower surfaces same. Just as a rectangle, rectangle has the upper face as well as the lower face as squares. Or you can say upper and the lower face can be rectangle. And the other one that is group B is solid having a base as a polygon and the other surface that is the upper surface as an apex. Apex is a single point just as a cone. A cone has a circular base and it has a tip at the top. So the, uh, the slant surface connects the circular base to the tip. So that will be classified into group B. So we have group A and group B. Okay, let's move on to group A first. What are the types of solids which are available in group A? In group A, we have cylinders, we have prisms, and we have cubes and cuboids. So here, remember that we are taking group A as the solids which have the upper and the lower surface both same. Means if, the, if we talk about a cylinder, cylinder has a circular base and a circular upper surface. And it has a curved surface that is its face. So cylinder has a circular base and a circular top, 
the diameter will be same of the base as well as the upper surface circle so it is classified into group a let's see cylinder now this is a cylinder as i said the upper surface is a uh, circle of say diameter d and the lower surface is also a uh, cir circle of diameter d and this white su su curved surface that you are seeing forms the body of the cylinder so we can say that this is a cylinder which can be classified into group a where both the base as well as the upper surface have the same polygon and if this surface was not if this circle was not of the same diameter then it would be converted into another type of solid that we will be discussing later on okay let's move on to the next that is prisms we'll take two examples of prisms and we'll try to understand that why prisms are classified into group a now let's see this is a triangular prism now in this triangular prism the base is a triangle of say has any height and sorry any base and any height say b and h so this triangle is also of the same height and uh, base that is base and height b and h as the the base triangle so this can be classified into group a and this is a triangular prism this is its upper surface this is its lower surface or we can say the base and this is the body of the surface that is another you can say it as a parallelogram you can say that this uh, triangular prism has two triangles and has three parallelograms or say type of rectangles okay now we talk about square prism it is having square why we are calling it as square prism because its base and upper surface are both a square squares of length a all of its side is say we are supposing it as a all these four sides uh, if you can take a look at uh, the figure and my cursor this side is of length a again this a this is a and this is a so this is a square of uh, side a similarly the upper surface will again have the same uh, square with the side uh, equal to length a and this i'll go back to the slide uh, yeah and this body surface will be formed of rectangles of four sides so it becomes a prism and this is classified into group a okay moving on to next types of prisms two more prisms we are going to discuss one is a pentagonal prism and the other one is the uh, hexagonal prism now the difference between what we discussed uh, just in the previous slide and this slide is it is both similar and they are all prisms the only thing is the number of sides and the, the polygon are differing say in the first we discussed it as triangle then we saw it as a square then we are seeing a pentagon and then we are seeing a hexagon so in triangle there are three uh, corners or we can say three sides three parallelograms that will be forming the that will be joining the base and the upper surface in square there will be four in pentagon there will be five and in hexagon there will be six so pentagon again we can say that it is of side a and this same pentagon would the base pentagon would be uh, will be there as the upper surface as well and these five surfaces uh, or say five rectangles or five parallelograms you can say uh, connect the base and the upper surface so they basically form a uh, all these come together and basically form a prism now the next comes is the hexagon this again in the hexagon it is very similar to this uh, it has six corners and this also has six corners the uh, the size that is side of this will be if you take it as a then this will also have the side as a so both are same and we have six surfaces so we are going calling it as an hexagonal prism here we don't actually have six surfaces the body has six surfaces and we add base and the upper surface so it becomes a total of eight uh, surfaces that are there totally on this particular prism okay the next comes is a cube now in a cube what is there is that cube has six surfaces that it, you can say basically it's a square prism but the why we are taking it as different is because that all the surfaces all the six surfaces are square and all of them have the same side that 
a single square of the base or the upper surface has then if you can rotate it and or you can uh, land it on any of the surfaces then it is uh, it will have the same configuration of the base as well as the upper surface now in contrast with uh, uh, say a different prism or we can say a triangular prism what will happen is that if you are keeping it, keeping it on the base and the upper surface both will be uh, triangles but if you turn it down and keep it like this then a uh, rectangle would be there and the other surface would be pointed and becomes a pyramid so it is quite different from what this cube is there so we are classifying it as totally as different okay uh, it has all the six surfaces as square and they have equal areas equal sides and everything are the same okay and the next thing that we have is a cuboid now it is again if we extend the cube in its length then it becomes a cuboid in any one of the lengths it becomes a cuboid or you can say it becomes a square pyramid but this is you can call this as a rectangular pyramid where this have four rectangles and one uh, two squares and if you turn it exactly vertically upwards then it becomes a square pyramid so this is a cuboid the we are just previous one was a cube and we had uh, studied tri triangle pyramid oh sorry triangle prism then uh, we studied a uh, square prism then we studied hexagonal prism and pentagonal prism as well okay now let's move to group b now group b has a base which is of a polygon say it has three sides and it is rectangular four sides square five sides pentagon if it has eight sides uh, octagon so basically it has a polygon if it is a circle then it has infinite number of sides so it is again a polygon it is a closed polygon so it has a closed polygon at the base and it has a tip that is its upper uh, say the apex that is a single point which is which is connected to all these uh, points on the polygon so it becomes what it becomes a uh, it, it can be classified into uh, type b now in type b we can have three types of solids first is the cone second is the pyramid and third is the tetrahedron now let's study each one of them step by step the first thing that we are going to study is a cone now in a cone as you said in group p what will happen is that all the uh, so solids that we are going to encounter will have a polygon at the base and it will have an apex or a single point at the top now if we consider this cone then it has a circular base and this point is connected to all the points on this circumference of the polygon so we call this as uh, so uh, we classify this in section b that it has a uh, polygon base and a apex at the top so this is a cone in which this is the apex this is the body surface this is the uh, you can say the slant surface uh, sorry the slant uh, side and this is the lower surface or you can call it as the base moving on uh, to the next that is pyramids now prisms prisms have uh, the bottom and the top surface are same now the only difference b b between pyramid and a prism is that prism has both the surfaces the same upper and the lower surface or the base and pyramid has the lower surface as a polygon and the upper uh, surface or say the upper tip is the apex so when you take a look at it uh, this is a triangular prism in which there is a triangle at the base and there will be an apex at the top so this becomes a triangular pyramid this is a square pyramid a square pyramid has a square at the bottom and it has the apex as its tip so all the points on the periphery of the square are connected to this point and it is known as a apex so this is the apex this is the base and this is the body which will be formed of three triangles and here it uh, the triangular in a triangular prism all the four will be triangles and if it is a square triangular prism then it will be exact all the four sides would be exactly the same the next two types of uh, pyramids uh, uh, that we are going to discuss is pentagonal pyramid again very similar to prism it just has the upper surface as an a uh, apex the rest of the things are the same that the bottom is a uh, pentagonal uh, polygon and the upper point is an apex and all the points on the periphery of pentagon are attached to or say linked to this point so this is a pentagonal pyramid
and it has five triangles that form up the body surface of the pentagonal pyramid when we talk about hexagonal pyramid again it is similar it is it has a hexagon at the base and an apex from uh, on which all the points of the hexagon are connected and it will have six triangles which will be forming the body surface and it will have one more that will be a pentag uh, sorry hexagon so a total of seven slide sides the next is the tetra uh, this is a tetrahedron in a tetrahedron the thing is that there will be this is a type of uh, say triangular pyramid but this triangular pyramid has a speciality just as a cube had a, a special it is a special type of prism then tetrahedron is a special type of prism in which there will be four sides that that's why it is tetra and it will all those four sides will be triangular surfaces which will be equal now you can see that the orange part is a base triangle and the other four parts are again triangles so it forms a becomes a tetrahedron it is also classified into group b because it has a tip at the top and the base as a polygon now we will talk about uh, different uh, parameters of a solid uh, first we will talk about square prism now what are the different notations that are there see this is a square prism uh, first we'll justify it as a prism uh, this is a prism because both the surfaces are same now why it is a square prism because the upper surface as well as the lo lower surface you can see in orange are squares so we'll, uh, we know that this is the base and this is the top surface these both are squares the next uh, that we have is that this is the rectangular face and we have four rectangular faces in total this is the longer edge this is the base edge which will be shorter than the longer edge and this is the corner of the base that we have so these are different parameters of a solid that, uh, in particular square prism the next thing uh, that we are discussing is a square pyramid in a square pyramid again we'll discuss that first we'll uh, justify it as a pyramid then we'll say okay uh, let's name them first we are say uh, this has a base as a polygon and the apex is there so it is a pyramid now why is it a square pyramid because the base is a square so now let's start naming them this is the apex as we know all the points are converging at one point so this is known as the apex this is known as a, this is a triangular face and it has total of four triangular 